There are countless ways we as course developers can strategize to provide meaningful learning experiences for our students. Online environments provide many new opportunities over traditional face-to-face -face instruction for engaging students. That said, one who simply attempts to recreate face-to-face -face strategies online will likely find that they are ill-suited and both students and teachers pay the price with ineffective learning and unreasonable workloads. Furthermore, the online environment provides new opportunities that can be utilized as a complement to traditional teaching. Here are some select strategies offered by experienced online instructional designers. Bring all the materials into online process. It's more like working together, sharing resources together, and then uh, the ultimate goal is to improve the quality, quality of learning, quality of teaching. So I, I want to emphasize the partnership in teaching and learning as an instructional designer. The first design strategy that I employ is to get course authors to think about the map of the course. What do they want students to accomplish as a result of completing the course? So from first week to 13 weeks, what do they want students to really engage with throughout the course? Um, first thing I would like to do is planning. Uh, I have a document called uh, course mapping. And what we are doing there is, because our courses are 30 weeks, mapping out um, for each week, so, um, being realistic. Okay, so we are expecting students to spend like six hours each um, week. And so, okay, what are the learning goals, learning outcomes here, and uh, matching activities and assignments in the alignment with learning outcomes. So that's the first part. For strategies, uh, this is a really obvious thing, but for me a key strategy is making sure assignments are really clearly spelled out. Uh, I'm amazed at how many assignments I get from course authors where there's a core of a good assignment in there, but they kind of write it like a story or a narrative. And what I find students really need is they need steps. Here's the five things you have to do in this assignment. And I spend a lot of time with assignments and courses I design where I have to find the structure hidden in the narrative the course author has provided me with and mark that out very clearly for students because that really frustrates students. The second design strategy that I use is getting course authors to think about the activity structures that they can embed within the course. So they have a clear idea about how they can map the content to particular activity structures again to get students to engage in the activities throughout the course and look at the content in more engaging ways. It's to get them to um, either find resources uh, or I would provide them with resources. I use TED Talks quite a lot in my technology uh, courses where I have them view a video and make um, comments about the video, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. It's usually quite lively. Uh, I guess my favorite learning activity has to do with uh, making sure that people um, use media effectively when they're gathering things uh, for a course and display it and share it with others and provide opportunities for people to recycle that information, either find something that's very open that someone can repurpose and use or find something that's very open that people can share with others and then discuss and also take away uh, and perhaps even repurpose it and make it better and share it back with the rest. Um, another one is to get the students to post very interesting presentations, uh, uh, multimedia kinds of presentations that they've made. I found them to be, the students to be exceptionally capable of creating their own videos, creating their own multimedia environments and posting quite um, sophisticated kinds of productions. So having, those are the two that I would, uh, uh, that I really enjoy. And my favorite is certainly uh, embedding social media, wikis, blogs, discussion forums, and really enhancing that student-to-student -student interaction, uh, which really defines, uh, to a large extent, effective online learning. Interesting things early on in terms of icebreakers or things that help people to connect themselves to the course and the course to their professional and personal interests. And once that's done, I think people feel that they are, are more personally connected to the course. Have an active community within the discussion area because a lot of the learning takes place in the discussion area. And um, students sometimes don't realize this, so if you can uh, put thought-provoking questions in the discussion area or help students to move along in the discussion area, you'll find that they help each other learn as well as you guide them to learn and um, just creating a learning community within the discussion area is, is a very good strategy. 
activity is actually probably because of this experience I had as an online student was that is actually the, the discussion forums um, only when they're a very unstructured when there's a real um, possibility for students to go in directions and on tangents and that sort of thing I don't I'm not a big fan of being involved in discussions that are very structured that tell me I only can write 300 words that are very specific to a topic and I understand why we as instructional designers do that but as a student I really like there to be a little bit more freedom in that the tools that I, I, I like to work with in the online environment is uh, whether it's a live classroom or some sort of voice tool because it, I think it adds a, an extra layer of richness to the to the course if, if it's appropriate. Uh, the ability to have students interacting synchronously uh, in the course material, whether that's for a tutorial or for a uh, you know, class presentation or even just to spend some time looking at resources together, I think adds a, a, a personal element uh, that you don't always get when it's a very much a, a text-based course. No, I, I think distance education has gone through a number of phases of development, and one of them, uh, of course, was the printed study guide. The printed study guide had its day, and it was a fa fantastic way of presenting material to students. It worked very well. We then gravitated to uh, the online world and uh, asynchronous uh, methodologies, where you had you had text-based discussions, and we still use those text-based dis discussions. After a while, I think I realized as a program director and designer of these courses that much of that kind of uh, uh, interaction, that kind of discussion, was going unnoticed. Um, I, my solution so far has been to balance the asynchronous with the synchronous and to take the amount of asynchronous uh, textual uh, messaging, reduce it, reduce it to a useful figure, and then supplement it with synchronous synchronous kinds of approaches. So you, you have, for instance, online office hours that are synchronous, that are in real time. You have a preparation in the asynchronous world for that office hour or that uh, online classroom. And the third strategy that I often like to get my course authors to think about is links to practice. Using theory is fine, but getting students to really engage and think about how they can use this content in everyday life. What are the practical applications that they can take and use in any job environment or in any situation to allow them to think more critically about how they can participate in everyday, everyday activities. The other strategy I like to employ is case studies. Uh, case studies let people work in groups, uh, which is good, but it gives them a framework again. It's, case studies are very practical, and I find students really benefit from that as opposed to things that are abstract. So you, you have a case study that gives them the framework, but they can interpret that any way they want. So you get the student-centered thing, the creativity, but you have the framework that makes them feel comfortable because they know what it is that they have to analyze.